Today, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, we start the chapter Bab al-Tayammum The chapter pertaining to Tayammum Which is, can be translated as the dry ablution Lughatan, linguistically, Tayammum Means al-Qasd Al-Qasd Like niyyah, the thing which is intended Where Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah وَلَا تَيَمُّمُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ Don't intend the evil of your wealth Okay, when it comes to giving charity So the word tayammum in Surah Al-Baqarah Comes with the meaning of qast, intending, right? And technically, istilahan or shar'an The technical definition is At-ta'abbudu lillahi ta'ala Bil-mashi al-waj wal-yaddain Bi-turab tahur Ala sifatin maksusa Is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala By wiping the face and the hands With pure soil in a specific way okay and the verses in the quran pertaining to this tayammum where allah in surah al-maida he said falam tajidu ma fatayammamu sa'idan tayyiba famsahu bi wujuhikum wa aydikum minhu if you do not find water then go to tayammum dry ablution and wipe your faces and your hands therefrom okay and in the uh, sunnah of the prophet sallallahu there are many we have in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet Sallallahu said Inna Sa'id al-Tayyib Tahur al-Muslim wa in lam yajid al-ma' ashra sinin fa'idha wajad al-ma' fa'yumissahu bashratahu fa'inna dhalik al-khayr The Prophet Sallallahu said that verily uh, tayammum is purification for the believer even if he doesn't find water for 10 years okay and in the other narration the one that I was supposed to quote, the one I just quoted is Abi Dawood, the one in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, is where the Prophet ﷺ said, That the earth has been made for me a place of prayer, a masjid, and tahur, and purification. So any person from my ummah that salah comes upon him, then let him go ahead and pray. Meaning that if he doesn't have water, he has the earth to purify himself with. So these are some of the evidences that show us in the Quran and the Sunnah that tayammum is something which is well established. The author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Al-Hajawi, he says, وَهُوَ بَدْلُ الطَّهَارَةِ الْمَا This tayammum is a replacement for the purification of water. It's a replacement for the purification of water. However, when the ulama they discuss this, there are two terms they used. One term is mubih, mubih, which means permitting. The other term is rafi', rafi', which means it's a complete lifting of the state of hadith, all right? The state of being in intangible purity. So the ulama, they say it's either rafi', which is lifting, or it's either mubih, which is it's permitting for that act of worship only. So the majority of the ulama, including the Hanbali scholars, this author, he says it's mubih. It's only mubih, it's only permitting, and it's not rafi', it's not lifting. It doesn't remove the state of hadith. So it's not exactly like water. Rather, it's something which permits you to worship Allah Azawajal for that time period only. From the evidences is the hadith in Abi Dawood, where Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he was in a state of janaba and when he woke up, it was so cold for him, he couldn't make ghusl. It was too cold for him. So he prayed with his companions as he was, okay, after making tayammum. And then the companions later, they complained to the Prophet ﷺ about this situation. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Amru, salayta bi ashabika wa anta junub. He said, the Prophet ﷺ, oh Amru, you prayed with your companions while you were junub. So he said, فَأَخْبَتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ بِمَا مَنَعَنِي مِنَ الْإِفْتِسَالِ So I told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about my excuse from not making ghusl. وَقُلْتُ إِنِّي سِمَعْتُ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ And I heard Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا And do not kill yourselves, for verily Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is with you merciful. فَضَحِكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ شَيْءٍ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laughed at his statement and didn't say anything. So where from this hadith is the istidlal or the wajhul dalal, where is the proof to say that this is mubih and not rafi'? 
mubih meaning it's permitting only and it's not lifting the state of hadith where in the hadith is the proof for the majority of the ulama including our author who say that it's only mubih and not rafi' Don't kill yourselves? No. So remember what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's mubih. Mubih means it's only permitting for the act of worship and it's not lifting the state of hadith. Right? He said, Ya Amru, salayta bi ashabika wa anta junab. Oh Amru, you prayed with your companions while you were junab. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi confirmed that he was in the state of Janabah. I mean, the Janaba wasn't lifted with the tayammum, right? So the, he was told by this companion that I made tayammum. But still the Prophet ﷺ told him, Oh, you prayed with your companions while you were in the state of Janaba. So this is one of the proofs that shows that it's not rafi'ah. It's not lifting the state of the hadith. Rather, it's mubih. It's permitting you to perform the act of worship which is required. Okay? So we're saying that tayammum, as the majority of the ulama, they say, it's mubih. Fadl. You have a question? You said that the Prophet already was made aware of it. Yeah. Say again, please. What's the evidence for that? No, in the same hadith, the companions that came to the Prophet complaining about this Amru ibn al Aws. So they're the ones who told the Prophet what had happened. That he prayed with us, he, had, uh, he was in a state of Janaba, he didn't make ghusl, okay? He made tayammum and prayed with us. Maybe they knew, maybe they knew he didn't make uh, ghusl. But that's not the point. The point from the hadith is that the Prophet ﷺ said to him, you were in a state of janaba and you prayed with your companions. You see? So the Prophet ﷺ is confirming for him that the act of worship he did, the tayammum was correct. And that he prayed with his companions was correct as an imam. But also he was confirming and stating that you were in a state of janaba. So the <coughs> ulama based on this hadith, they say it's mubih. Okay? It's permitting only. It's not lifting the state of hadith. It's not rafi'ah. Okay? If, it, inshallah, don't concentrate too much on the point. It's not, it is important, but alhamdulillah. The author, he says, Rahimullah ta'ala, may Allah have mercy upon him. إِذَا دَخَلَ وَقْتُ فُرِيضَةٍ أَوْ أُبِيحَتْ نَافِلَةٍ He's saying, if the time for the obligatory prayer comes upon you, okay, or it's permitted for you to pray a nafil. So again, because the author and those who agree with him, they say that this is mubih, it's a concession, it's not lifting of the hadith, right? They say you can only make the tayammum at the time of the obligatory prayer, not before it. And you can only make the tayammum for the nafal in a time when it's not forbidden for you to pray the nafal. Okay? For example, you cannot make tayammum to pray nafal after asr, for example. Okay? <laughs> or when the sun is rising, for example, according to this opinion. So you can only make the tayammum at the time of the obligatory prayer. Why? Because it's a concession, it's a need. And the need is only going to be allowed at that time. And also they have the hadith with the Prophet Sallallahu that we mentioned before in Bukhari and Muslim, where he said, وَجُعِلَتْ لِي الْأَرْضِ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا And the earth has been made for me, a place of prayer, a masjid, and tahur, and purification. So any man from my ummah whose salah comes upon him, then he should pray. So the key point here that salah comes upon him, meaning that the time of salah is upon him. Then he should go ahead and pray, make purification with the earth and pray. So they say this is one of the evidences also to show you that you can only make tayammum when the obligatory time for the prayer comes in. The imam, he says, وَعَدْمُ الْمَا you can only make tayammum in the absence of water. What's the proof for that? The ayah that we mentioned, right? فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا If you do not find water, then go the next, the next purification that you go to is the dry purification, which is tayammum. Now the ulama, they talk about finding water. What is the dhabit? The dhabit means the regulating rule. Okay, the regulating <coughs> rule for what is considered as finding water. <coughs> they say being absent of water is that water is not in your dwellings or in your locality. Locality which is understood customarily, orphan. 
So whatever your, the customarily norm in your society would be for understanding that water is close or far, then that's what you have to base it upon, right? If water is close to you, then you have to go out and look for it. If it's far from you, then you don't have to go out and look for it, right? So it goes back to the earth. Also, they say this statement of the author where he said that tayammum is made in the absence of water. Water can be in front of you, right in front of you, right? Right next to you. But still you make tayammum. Why would that be? Say again, please. Right, let's make it clean water. It's clean water, perfectly, nothing wrong with it. You may be sick, unable to use it, right? You may be sick, unable to use it. It may be the last few drops of water that you have for you and your family. If you drink this water, you're going to die of thirst, etc. Any of those situations. So in this situation, you're still in the absence of water, Adamul Ma, but this Adamul Ma is Hukman, not Haqiqatan. Hukman is, is absence of water in terms of a ruling, not in reality, okay? Then the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, أو زاد على ثمنه كثيرا أو ثمن يعجزه Also, you make tayammum if the water is available, but the price of the water is increased a lot, or to the extent where the person cannot afford the water, right? So the ulama of this opinion, they say that even if you're super rich, and really if somebody says to you, the price of this water is two riyals, but I'm selling it to you for 20 riyals for whatever crazy reason. And you can afford that, it's no skin off your nose, it's not going to harm you. But they said even in that situation you don't have to. You don't have to purchase it, why? Because it's gone way above what it should be. Right? If it was just one real extra, two real, then maybe. But because it's gone way above the market price, then in this situation you don't have to. And definitely not if you're in a situation where you cannot afford to purchase the water, then you will go ahead and make tayammum, right? The author, he says, Also, you make tayammum if you are worried about using the water. Like we said, it could harm you in a variety of ways, right? So if there's any harm involved in you using the water, then you don't have to use water, you make tayammum. If there's any harm to your health or your physical being. So he said, So the person is worried about using it or seeking it. What does he mean, or talabihi, or seeking it? How could you be harmed by seeking water? Traversing exactly, traversing difficult terrain, or if you live in London and at particular times you can't go out of your neighborhood at a certain time of night because it's so dangerous, right? These kind of things. You know that there's bandits around. Or he says, or talabihi, darabadnihi, or rafiqihi, or rumatihi. So, you make tayammum if you're worried that the water is going to affect you negatively or when you go out seeking it, it's going to affect you negatively or it's going to affect your companions that are with you on the journey or hurmatihi, or the hurma, which is the wife or any other female companions that are with you or malihi, or any type of wealth so it could be that you have cattle, sheep with you, livestock as an example but if you were to leave them and to go out in search of tayammum, search of water then somebody may come and steal your livestock. So you're really worried about that. You have real reason to worry for that. Then there's no need to go out and look for the water. Okay, you just make tayammum. Bi'atshin aw maradin aw halak wa nahuhi. So he says that either it's harm due to thirst or due to sickness or due to destruction of property or self. Shuri'a a tayammum. Then the person can go ahead and make tayammum. So to summarize all of that, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in Ahmad and Abi Dawood, where he said, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. There is no harming or reciprocation of harm. There is no harming or allowing harm to fall upon oneself. So anything which is going to harm other than you or bring harm to you, you have to avoid. So if that's situation with water, then you go to tayammum. And also we have the hadith which we quoted before of Amr ibn As where he prayed because he was fearful that it was too cold, he was going to harm himself, right? So though he was in a state of Janaba, he went ahead and prayed. The author, he says, <clears throat> And if a person is in a situation where he finds water, right? But that water is only going to suffice part of his purification. What does that mean? Exactly, he can only do half of the wudu, for example. Then for the rest of the purification, 
he makes tayammum after using it. Right? So he only got enough water to wash half of his body in the wudu. So then after that, he has to make tayammum for the rest of his purification. The Prophet said in Bukhari, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِالْأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ If I command you with the command, then do from it what you are able to do. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ As in the Quran. Do from it what you are able to do. So the person has water but not enough. It's a command to use water, right? So he has to do from that water, use that water, what he's able to do. But then the situation arises. I will save that for a bit later. Then he has to do from that what he's able to do in terms of uh, using the water and then make it tayammum. The author, he says, وَمَنْ جُرِحَ تَيَمَّمَ لَهُ وَغَصَلَ الْبَاقِي And if a person is injured, he has an injury on his body which prevents him from being able to use water, then he has to make tayammum. Right? For that part where he cannot use. And then uh, he carries on washing the rest of his limbs. So a person, la sallallahu is injured in, on his arm, for example, the rest of his body he makes wudu except for that part with the armies, right? Except for that part of the injury with the armies. If he can wipe over it, then that's the thing he should do, whether it's wiped with a bandage or not with a bandage. That's what he should go to first, is to wipe with water. If he cannot wipe with water because the injury is going to cause him more harm by wiping with water, then tayammum is made for that injury, right? So wudu is made in the rest of the body, but for that injury, tayammum is made. And the official madhab opinion, the official opinion of the Hanbali scholars, is that the tayammum is made at the sequence, at the place where you would have washed it, not after. Meaning to say you don't wait till you finish wudu and then make tayammum. You make the tayammum at the part where you've reached that you cannot wash. What is their proof of this? That you do it in sequence. Exactly, because tatib is obligatory in wudu, and tayammum is a replacement of wudu, right? So they say al badal lahu al hukm al mubdal. Yes, so you're not so you're not wiping on the part. You don't. So the part which is injured, you're unable to wipe water on it. Right? Or if, even if it's bandaged, you still cannot wipe water on it. Once you, fin- once you come to that part, you make tayammum. Right? Are you saying your hands are going to be wet? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So just dry your hands. Dry your hands. Make the tayammum for that part. And then carry on with the wudu. This is what they're referring to. You could, you, you could, it could be that you're making it outside. You could be one of those very particular people that you had the, uh, the turab with you. Right, as some people do. In fact, there's some of the opinion of some of the ulama that you should carry the turab with you. Right? In case, especially if you're on a journey, in case your water runs out and then you're, tayam, and then you're in a state where you need to make tayammum and you cannot find turab, you cannot find soil. So they say you should carry it with you. But the others, they say, no, this was never reported from the Prophet or the companions of the Allah. Anyway, in this case, we were talking about if a person, he has an injury. We said that when he gets to the point of that injury and he cannot use water in any way, shape or form, then at that point he makes tayammum for that injury and then he carries on washing the other limbs of the wudu, right? At that point. <coughs> the author, he says, وَيَجِبُ طَلَبُ الْمَا فِي رَحْلِهِ وَقُرْبِهِ وَبِدِلَالَةٍ And it's obligatory upon the person to look for water in his rahal. Rahal is his dwellings, okay, in his dwellings. وَقُرْبِهِ And that which is close to him. وَبِدِلَالَةٍ And if there is somebody that has guided him, saying that, look, if you walk, you know, a kilometer that way, you can find water, and the person is trustworthy, then he has to go ahead and do that. He has to take that step, those steps of enacting what the person guided him to. Ibn Laham in Al-Qawaid, He said that if the person is sure that he's not going to find water, then there's no need for him to go out and look for the water. Okay? It shouldn't be a futile exercise. If you're sure from your experience or from your understanding of the environment that you don't have to go out, then Ibn Laham in Al-Qawaid, he said you do not have to do so. Okay? What is... We say he should go out and look for the water. And we said before that the qurb, the closeness, is that what is customary normal? And the distant is that what is customarily understood by the urf. So the rule is al urf muhakkamatun. Al urf customs or customarily norms muhakkamatun are enacted upon. 
they enacted upon in the absence of a Sharia text. If there's no Sharia text pertaining to the issue, you go to the Urf, the customary norms, but with two conditions. The first condition is that the Urf, the customary norm, doesn't go directly against the Sharia, that which is already established by the Sharia. Secondly, that the customary norm is that which is established in the sense that it's a norm amongst the people. Not that there's 10 different norms amongst the same society, right? We cannot really say that the norm in this society is X, rather it's X, Y, and Z, okay? So if there's more than one norm, then you cannot go to this rule. <coughs> the Imam, he says, فَإِن نَسِيَ قُدْرَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَتَيَمَّ مَا أعاد. If the person's in a situation where he knew that he had water close by, but he forgot about it for whatever reason, and he went ahead and made tayammam, then as soon as he realizes, he has to repeat his purification and repeat his salah. Why? Hey, ascent. Because water was there for him. But the ayah says, فَإِنَّمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً If you do not find water, then go ahead and make tayammam. And also the ulama, they say, لَا عِبْرَةَ بِذَّنْ أَلْبَيِّنْ خَطَأُهُ لَا عِبْرَةَ بِذَّنْ أَلْبَيِّنْ خَطَأُهُ There is no, there is no taking into consideration of dhan. Dhan is that you thought, okay? So the person thought there was an absence of water. There's no consideration with that which you thought if later on it transpires that you were wrong. So if your thought, you based your action upon a thought and it transpired later that you were wrong, then that is not valid for you in the Sharia. Then you have to go back and fulfill the command. And also the ulama, they say, you have Bab al-Af'al and Bab al-Turuq. Bab al-Af'al is the side wherein you have commands to do X, Y, and Z. Bab al-Turuq is you have command to leave off X, Y, and Z, to avoid X, Y, and Z, right? So you have Bab al-Af'al, which are commands to do. You have Bab al-Turuq, which is commands to avoid prohibitions. They say, <coughs> that the commands, then in every situation you have to come with it. Okay? So forgetfulness is not applicable in the situation of commands, the things which you are commanded to do. Whereas in the things which you are commanded to avoid, forgetfulness is applicable. Okay? Is there a proof for that? The Prophet ﷺ, once he was praying, the companions of the Allah and whom they saw the Prophet ﷺ take off his shoes. All of them they took off their shoes in the prayer. Afterwards they said to the Prophet, ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, we saw you do something we never saw you do before. You took off your shoes. He said, Jabir ﷺ came to me and informed me that under my sandal there was some filth. So I took off my shoes. Right? Where's the proof from this hadith? The proof is that the Prophet ﷺ didn't repeat his salah. He took the shoes off and continued with the salah. So the forgetfulness of the fact that he had impurity on his clothing didn't affect his salah because it was done out of forgetfulness and it was pertaining to the thing which should be avoided. Bab at taruq right? So we said the things pertaining to avoidance out of forgetfulness or wrong thinking, you can be, that can be overlooked. But the commands of having to do something like make wudu or make tayammum out of forgetfulness of, or wrong thinking, that is not accepted for you. You have to, when you remember, you have to fulfill that, right? The Imam, he says, And if the person intends with his tayammum, a variety of ahdath, a variety of states of hadith, right? So the person woke up from sleeping, which is a state of hadith, right? Breaks wudu. A person urinated. A person ate camel meat, for example, right? So he has a variety of states of hadith. So with his niya, he can remove all of them if he intends to do so, with one tayammum. He doesn't have to make a tayammum for every single state of hadith. He just has to make the niya that I'm doing tayammum to remove all of these, and all of them will be removed. أو نجاسة على بدنه تدره إزالتها أو عدم ما يزيلها. Or the person is in a situation that he has najasa upon his body, not clothing. He has najasa upon his body. It will harm him to remove that najasa. It's going to harm him to remove that najasa. Or he doesn't have that which he can use to remove the najasa from his body. In this situation, our author and the Hanbali scholars they say that it's allowed for the person to make tayammum 
for that situation. So for example, a person can have a person can have an injury where there's a lot of blood profusely flowing, right? So this is considered as nudges. This blood which is flowing is considered as nudges. Or even clearer, a person has an injury and he knows that upon it an impurity fell. And he's unable to wash it off. He's unable to wash this uh, impurity from that injury because it will affect him negatively, right? So in this situation, he's allowed to make tayammam for the removal of the najasa. And to be technical, it's not removal. It's going back to that word that we said, mubih. It's permitting, right? So he's allowed to make tayammam for this situation of the janaba. Where's the proof? And this is only the humbly scholar's opinion. The majority, they say no. The proof that they have is a very stronger proof. They have in Abi Dawood, Ahmad and Tirmidhi, the hadith that we mentioned before of Abi Dhar, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Sa'id al Tayyib Tahur al Muslim. That verily the soil which is pure is purification for the believer. Wa in lam yajid al ma'a ashra sinin. Even if he cannot find water for 10 years. Fa'ida wajid al ma'a fal yomissahu bashratahu. Fa'inna dalika khayr. But if he finds water, then let him use it to wipe it on his body, for that is good for him. Right? So here in this hadith, it's indicating that the water and the tayammum is to do with what? To do with the body. Right? So there's a clear indication in the hadith that the purification of the water and the tayammum is for the body. Because he said, بَشْرَتُهُ If he finds water, then let him use it to wipe his body. So he mentioned it in the context with tayammum and water together. And that's the proof that you can use it to remove any najasa which is on your body. And as we said, the majority of the ulama, as a side point, they say no, tayammum is not made for that which is on, for the najasa which is on your body. But the opinion of our author and the Hanbali scholars, they have a strong proof and Allah knows best. The Imam, he says, أو خاف بردا And of course, if the person fears cold, he can use, he can make tayammum. أو هبس في مصر فتيمم Or a person is captivated, kept captive in a city, then he and he has no access to water, then he can make tayammum. Or adil malma wa turab, or a person is in a situation where he has no water. He has no water and he has no turab. He has no soil. Salla wa lam yu'id. So in all of these situations, in this in this bracket, in this sentence, a person he is kept captive in a city. He has no access to water. He can make tayammum. It's all well and good. Or the person has no water and has no soil, right? In this situation, he prays in the situation that he's in and he doesn't have to repeat the prayer. Allah says, right? Fear Allah to the best of your ability. So the person's ability in the situation of not having the tahara of tayammum or the tahara of ma, the tahara of water, is that he prays without any of them because that's the best he can do in that situation. And if after praying by half an hour, water comes to him, he doesn't have to make wudu and repeat the prayer. Because he prayed in the situation to the best of his ability that he was in, right? However, the scholars, they mention an important point here. The humbly scholars, as mentioned by Sheikh Muttalaq al-Jasr in his explanation of this. He said, look, he said, this person is known as Faqid al-Taharatayn, okay? Is the one who is absent of the two types of purification. He's, he's absent from water and he's absent from soil. So his situation is that for him to pray, it's haram. It's not allowed for him to pray. True? Because he has no water, has no soil. How's he supposed to purify himself? So his situation in the asl is that it's haram. But now because he's in a situation of durura, he's in a situation of necessity, he's compelled to pray in that situation without any of those two purif purifications. Therefore, he can only do that in the prayer which is obligatory. He's not allowed to do the sunnah. You see? So in his situation where he didn't have water, nor did he have tayammum, he's only allowed to pray the bare essentials of the prayer. And he's not allowed to go into the sunnah aspects of the prayer mentioned by Shaykh Mutlaq al-Jasr and others. وَيَجِبُ أَتَيَمُّمْ بِالْتُرَابِ طَهُورِ لَهُ غُبَارِ وَلَمْ يُغَيِّرُ طَاهِرٌ غَيْرُهُ and it's obligatory for him to make tayammum with turab, soil, that is pure and it has dust. Ghubar is dust, it has dust. And the soil shouldn't be changed by anything which was pure. Of course, if it was changed, 
if the soil was affected by najis, then you know that you cannot use it for, tayyab, for tayammum. But even if it was affected by some other pure substance, it took away its properties or something of that nature, then you wouldn't be able to use it. So the tayammum that you have to use, the, the thing that you have to use is the soil which is on the earth. It has to be part of the earth. Not only that, it has to have ghubar. Ghubar is that once you've touched it, something will come from it onto your hand, like dust or like a bit of sand. So you touch it, there has to be something from it on your hand. Why? Go back to the verse that Allah says, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدُ مَا فَتَيَمَّمُ سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَامْسَهُ بِوَجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِكُمْ مِنْ هُ Allah said, مِنْ هُ if, if you do not find water, then use pure soil and wipe your faces and your hands from it. Right? So in order to have مِنْ هُ there must be something that comes off from it. Right? And also, uh, Al-Imam Al-Raghib Al-Isfahani in his uh, Mufradat Al-Quran he said that this verse Sa'idan Tayyiban is Alladhi Yatasa'ad is Ghubar Yatasa'ad that which comes up from it in terms of dust etc. Right? Now here's a trick question that I put out on the ad advertisement. Some of the ulama they ask as a trick question they say, what is the substance that can be used for both wudu and tayammum? This is not the humbly opinion, by the way. It's just to give you some exercise of your mind. What is the substance that can be used for both tayammum and wudu? So, for wudu. Any ideas? Ice, thick ice. Because thick ice is part of the earth, it's covering the earth. You cannot get to, like the Eskimos, right? If they're in a situation where they don't have time to melt the water, then in that situation, they can make tayammum because the time of the prayer is going to go out. But if they're in a, place, and if they're in a time where they cannot have time to melt, they would melt the ice, it would become water for them. So this is the trick question that the ulama they use. But actually, Sheikh Hassan Adaila, who mentioned this in his explanation of Zad al he said, what are you going to say to those people who live there? The time is running out for them now, they cannot make will do from the ice, they have to make tayammum with the ice, right? And the tayammum is part of the earth, right? It's covering the soil, it's connected to the earth, it's part of the earth. So his opinion has weight, Allah knows best, but the, uh, the majority of the ulama, they say no, including the humble scholars. He says, وَفُرُودُهُ مَسْحُ وَجْهِهِ وَيَدَيْهِ إِلَى كُوَيْهِ And the pillars of the wudu, the obligatory parts of the wudu, are to wipe the face and the hands up until the wrists to wipe the face and the hands up until the wrist right in Bukhari Muslim Ammar ibn Yasin radiallahu anhu he narrates that once he was in a situation where he had to make uh, ghusl but he had no water so what he did he rolled around on the ground like the animals roll around on the ground covered himself in dust and then this was related to the Prophet sallallahu who said to him it would have sufficed you to do with your hands as such and then the Prophet ﷺ hit the ground with his hands once. Okay, hit the ground with his hands once. And then he wiped his left upon his right. And then the, uh, the outside of his hands and his face. Okay. This is how the tayammum is to be made. That you hit the ground after making the niyyah and then saying the basmala. You hit the ground. You wipe the, the left to the right and the right to the left, okay? And then you wipe your face. There's more details I'll give you now, inshallah. وَكَذَا a tartib And also obligatory is a tartib وَالْمُوَالَاتُ And continuity, this word muwalat fi hadith in asr In the small hadith. What small hadith? That which requires you to make wudu. So why is there tartib and muwalat? Because it's obligatory in what? It's obligatory in the wudu. That's why we said al-badal lahu al-hukim al-mubdal. That the badal, the replacement, takes the same rulings as the thing it is replacing. Right? So you have to have tartib and muwalat, as well as saying the basmala, etc. وَتُشْتَرَةُ أَنِّيَّةُ لَمَّا تَيَمَّمُ لَهُ مِنْ حَدَثٍ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ And the niya is conditional for you to have for you to, re, to, to intend removing the state of impurity that you're in, the state of hadith, you have to intend that exact state 
Hadith al-Asqar or Akbar or both of them. And also you have to intend the act of worship that you are intending this tayammum for. Right? So it's to remove the Hadith and also the act of worship that you are doing the tayammum for. Min hadithin aw ghayrihi fa inna wa ahaduha. So if the person was to just intend one of these states of impurity, then that's all he will get from it. Lam yudzi'hu anil akhir. Then it wouldn't suffice him from the other state. The Imam says, wa inna wa naflan aw atlaqa lam yusalli bihi faddan. If the person makes the intention for a nafl, aw atlaqa. Atlaqa means that he has an open intention. I'm going to pray any prayer. He's not intending a specific prayer, right? Salatul Mutlaq, an open prayer. So if he intends with his tayammam, a nafal prayer, or a mutlaq prayer, an open prayer, <coughs> then he says, Lam yusalli bihi fardan. Then the person cannot with that tayammam pray the fard. Why? Because this is a necessity. It's only done in necessity and it's mubih. It's only permitting. Therefore, you cannot go up with it. You cannot go to the fard. Though you have a tayammum for that which is lesser than the fard, which is the nafal or the mutlaq. This is what they say. But if the person intended with the tayammum, the fard, then he can pray the fard throughout the time. And also, he can pray any nafal that he wants to do so. Because the fard is the highest level. Therefore, anything which comes under it is also included in the niyyah of that tayammum, right? And he says, وَيُبْتَلُوا أَتَيَمَّمْ بِخُرُوجِ الْوَقْتِ Tayammum is broken or nullified once the time has finished. Why? Because it was permitting only for that time period, right? It was permitting only for that time period. So as soon as the time has come out, then your tayammum is considered as broken, except in one situation. Yeah, so I'm, I'm saying to you here, like the brother's correct, tayammum doesn't finish with the time period. Here I'm saying tayammum, the normal situation is that it finishes once dhuhr is finished, you may tayammum for dhuhr. Once dhuhr is finished, your tayammum is broken. Even if you didn't uh, pass wind or anything of that nature. But in this situation that the brother is mentioning, jama ta'akhir, jama ta'akhir is that you're a traveler, you want to combine two salahs. You want to combine the salah now at the later time. You want to combine maghrib, which is when you've made the tayammum, at the isha time. So the time of Maghrib finished, which is when you may tayammum, but it's still valid because the time of Isha is the one when you're going to pray your prayer. So it's considered as one time, right? So once the uh, time for the prayer finishes, the you know, tayammum is considered broken because they say, okay? That the durura, the necessity, is given credence according to the amount required. Is that the right word? The durura is given consideration due to the amount required. So you cannot go beyond necessity. Need and necessity, you're only permitted to break the rules for that amount which is required only. Like for example, somebody starving to death, he has pork in front of him. He has no other food. Does he eat the whole pig? No, right? He can only eat that which he is allow allowed to keep him alive till he can get to better food. Okay, likewise they give the example here that because this is a necessity, you can only use it for that prayer which is in front of you, the need. Once the need finishes, then your salah is broken. And also Imam Bayhaqi, he narrates from Umar ibn, uh, ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, who used to command the people to make tayammum for each salah. So this is qawl al-Sahabi, the statement of a Sahabi is hujja, is a proof if there's no known Mukhalafa from other companions. No known opposition from other companions, right? Coming to the end, what he says, wudu, And also the things which will break your tayammum, invalidate your tayammum, are the things which break wudu. What are the things which break wudu? Let's go from this way. Give me one. Going to the bathroom. Next thing. Deep sleep. Next thing. Next thing. Touching your private part, next. Passing wind, good, like the bathroom, next. Come on, <laughs> who else is with me normally? Brother, don't put your head down, next. What else breaks wudu? Eating camel meat, good. Blood, flowing blood, things like this, okay? So these things, they break your wudu, inshallah. We took a few chapters ago. And then he says, And once you come upon water, or water comes to you, 
Okay, it breaks your tayammum. As soon as water is in your vicinity, it breaks your tayammum even if you are in the prayer. So if you've got the last few words in your salah to say, right, you're a few words away from saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, but your little kid comes in and spoils it for you, he says, Baba, Baba, I found water. In that situation, your tayammum is gone, right? Why? In the ayah, right? فَلَمْ تَجِدُ مَاءً If you do not find water, then you go to Yaman. But here, you found water. So you have to go to water. And also the hadith that we mentioned with Abi Dhar, that if you find water, فَإِذَا وَجَدَ الْمَاءً فَلْيَمِسَّ هُمْ بَشَاتُهُ When he finds water, then let him use it on his limbs. So this hadith also, which was in Abi Dawood. And also, if the udhr, the excuse disappears, meaning that the person was sick, he couldn't use water, but then all of a sudden, his fever is broken. By the virtue of that, his fever is broken and now he can use the water again, his tayammum has been broken. So as long as the minute the excuse goes for having used tayammum, even if you're in the prayer, then your tayammum breaks and you have to repeat the prayer again. As long as it's within the time. Within the time. If the time is gone, then you don't have to repeat the prayer. وَتَيَمَّمُ آخِرُ الْوَقْتِ لِرَاجِ الْمَاءِ أَوْلَى and the person who thinks that he can get water but it's going to be towards the end time of the salah, then it's better for him to make tayammum, right? It's better for him to not make tayammum, sorry. It's better for him to, um, to not... وَتَيَمَّمُ مُؤَاخِرُ الْوَقْتِ لِرَاجِيَ الْمَاءِ أَوْلَى وَتَيَمَّمُ مُؤَاخِرُ الْوَقْتِ لِرَاجِيَ الْمَاءِ أَوْلَى Yes, so the person who thinks that he can get water Okay, who thinks that he's going to get water, but it's going to be like uh, towards the end of the salah, then he waits for that. But if he's not able to get the water, he thinks that water won't come before the salah time will be finished, then he has to make tayammum. If he knows that he can get to the water, right, before the time of the prayer finishes, then he should, what? He should wait for that when the water will come. But if he's sure that the water is not going to come and the time is going to finish, then he has to make tayammum. وَصِفَتُهُ أَنْ يَنْوِي ثُمَّ يُسَمِّي And the description of the tayammum is the person makes the niyyah, then he says the basmala, okay, as we mentioned. وَيَضْرِبُ تُرَابِ يَدَيْهِ مُفَرَّجَتَيْ الْأَصَابِعِ And then he hits the, the, the soil with his hands, both hands, and his fingers are open. His fingers are open. What does he do? He has the intention. He says the basmala, he hits the ground with both of his hands, and his fingers are open, not closed. Why open fingers? With the hope to get the turab in between the fingers like you do in the wudu, right? Okay, this is the reason why. And he wipes his face with his fingers. That's what it means by batanihima here. And he wipes his hands with his palms. He wipes his face with his fingers and his hands with his palms. Why? Why is this tafriq? Why this differentiation? That the face is with the fingers and the palms, uh, sorry, the hands are with the palms. So you wipe your face like so, after hitting the ground, but the hands you wipe using your palms. Why do you think? See, one of the categories of water, right? Remember we said, uh, one of the categories of Tahir is that it's Ma'un Musta'man, water which was used in the lifting of Hadith. So, if you use your whole hand for wiping the face, you... Huh? It's Musta'man, exactly. So they'll say that yes, now it's, it will be mustamu because you've used it for the cleaning of the face and now you're going to use it again for the cleaning of the hands. Right? The same turab. So they say what you do, you have to use, and this is the humble opinion, you have to use your fingers for your face and then your palms, rahatayhi, for the hands. Okay? asabi'ahu, And the person makes takhleel of his, uh, of his hands like this, right? However, this point, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was very strongly against it, as he said that he could, he said he couldn't find any proof or any, any evidence for this particular point, the takhleel and tayammum, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best. If you have any questions pertaining to these points, then feel free. Any mistakes were from myself, and the blessings were from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala.